Hey, welcome back to Mastering Kingdom Master Tutorials, narrated in English. So today we're going to talk about time. Time is critical for videos. We need to get our time to one minute for Instagram, but how do you make sure that you do that? Well, Kingdom Master has some features built into it that help you arrange your time, and you may not be familiar with all of them. We're going to go over four techniques today. The first of them is going to just talk about how to set your video up in the first place. The second is to set your settings so that your time is correct in your settings, and you'll understand what that means when we go over it. The third Third is how to read time in the timeline. And the fourth is a tip about timing and transitions. So if you're ready to check it out and get your videos in time, well, that was kind of bad, uh, but if you're ready to check out how to organize your time in KineMaster, then let's keep moving forward. All right, the first technique I'm going to talk about actually isn't in KineMaster at all. It is in your video filming technique. And it's because of this. When KineMaster has a transition, if your spoken word or your audio, whatever it is, if it's in there, then it can get confused in the transitions. You want your transitions to be clean of audio. So my recommendation is to give a three second buffer in the beginning where you're filming and no one's speaking or it's not important and three seconds at the end of your video content. And that people are smiling during that video content of silence so you can use the transition and have it not bleed into each other. Just a tip. I'm smiling now. So I decided next to show you how to read time in KineMaster, the various places that are important to watch. Now, obviously the red line in the center of the playhead, that's telling you where you are in time at the moment. It's pretty clear. All the times are to these microseconds. Sometimes the end microseconds don't really matter. Something that is not as clear and is really cool and easy to use on the far right hand side over here there is the complete length of your project as it stands and this is really helpful in that instance where we have something where we're trying to get below a minute for Instagram and we can do some rough cuts on this and we can see immediately so I hope you know that when you select something it turns yellow and that you can pull the end with your thumb or whatever you use and then you pull it and now you can see that the duration on the right hand side has gone and I've got it just below to, well, I did a little far to 58, but that's a real easy way to do a rough cut. And that number will always show you the total amount of time that is in your video. I find that really useful to know. Another really useful time readout in KineMaster is the duration feature. When you highlight anything and make it yellow and you hold on the end, you will see the duration of that element. So this is just a photo. And so it's telling you that this is going to last on screen for four seconds. And I find this really helpful because if you're pinched in or zoomed out, you can't really see exactly. You would kind of lose track of where that is. But here you say, oh, I still remember that it's only two seconds long or it's four seconds long. I want to show you in addition, if you're doing it with a video clip it's going to show you two values and so when I select that then it tells me the duration is 44 seconds the end trim is how much I've cut off of it so the duration is how much I'm showing in the film it's actually not the total length of that video the total length of the video is if you add those two numbers together but you can see I'm showing 41 seconds of it and I've cut off two seconds of it and as I move those numbers change this is really helpful again to show how much time you're spending on a single clip. The next time related item I'm going to show you is in the settings menu. It's both in the global settings for KineMaster right here, and it is individually overridable in a project, but it is the default duration of a photo clip in seconds. So if you're building a slideshow, then you'll want this number to be something, but if you're building a stop motion animation, you'll want that number to be a very small number. And what it means is every single photo that gets dropped into the timeline will be this length to start. In addition, we have the same for a layer, which is effect layers or other layers, and it is autonomous from that. So you can say, I want every effect layer to be four seconds globally. If I normally am making photo slideshows, then I'd probably set this around four so I can have transitions between the slideshow items. So now we're gonna go back and we're going to create a new project and we're going to see that the settings menu here also has this same 
in the editing area and it's set to what we set it out front, which was four. Let's say I decided to make a stop motion this time around, I would probably lower it all the way down to one tenth of a second. But let's go back to four seconds because I'm just going to show in the creation of a slideshow how it works and it's pretty straightforward and easy. I go ahead and I click on my media library. I've already created a series of images in a favorites for a slideshow. I hit one, two, three, four, five. Each of them is now four seconds long. You can see my project is 20 seconds long and each of them is exactly the same length of four seconds. So knowing that you can do that and knowing that each of them, you're gonna have a consistency in how long each of these images is going to be is really nice. I'm gonna add a layer of an effect layer just so you can see how that the setting that I set will put in my vignette and I put it in there and you can see that it is four seconds as well because I had set that default setting to four seconds. And it's the easy way just to get your content to be appropriately length and to know in advance what that number that you want and create nice even slideshows that way. The last thing I'm going to do today is show you about transitions and timers. So I'm going to add a speedy warp in between these two items in the slideshow. And you can see that I have the ability here to change the number of seconds that the transition takes. So it's from down here at very, very fast to all the way up to two seconds of transition time. Now back to the idea of how long your original images are, I'm going to set this to two and I'm going to go ahead and go to the next transition. I'm going to add a speedy warp and you'll see that I no longer have the numbers going to 2.5 that are able for me to have a transition at all. So the length of time that you can have for a transition is based on the combination of the length of the photo and the transition that's previously coming into it. So when you're putting these together, if you want an even look, it's important to remember that, that if you want to have long transitions, then you're not going to be able to have uh, your photos really need to be a couple of seconds long in order to do that. So now if I drop this down to one second, just so you can see this again, I'm going to go into this one and I get more room in order to do this. This feature is on every single one of the transitions. So if I've added a light blur, you can see the number of seconds, light bath, see the number of seconds. It's part of a transition, but it's always in the slider here. And remember, you need to have enough room in order to get the bigger numbers of transitions. This works for both videos, for, um, for videos, for photos, and for background clips. And so that's a great way to even out your transitions and to be able to modify and get some cool transitions by either speeding them up or slowing them down. And that about wraps it up for today. I hope you learned something to help your times improve. Get your stuff on Instagram in exactly 60 seconds. Hopefully I taught you something new about transitions and times. If you liked the video, make sure to check like and to subscribe to the channel. Come back for more exciting and interesting ideas for mastering your own KineMaster techniques and get out there and make some awesome video with the best mobile video platform on the planet. Wow. Yeah. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Can the master.